Welcome to another episode. Listen, I'm not gonna lie. I don't like Weezy's face right now, but the thing is, I'm so glad we're recording. I know, it. but the thing is, I, I I know I'd be like, welcome to yet another episode, and I'm like. <laughs> Bro, I'm so sick of hearing welcome to yet another episode because... And that was what you came up with in its place? I, yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so sick of saying that, so I'll go with welcome, bitch. These vocals is hitting. These vocals is hitting. Anyways, guys, welcome to another episode of Motherfucking Horrible Decisions. This is your girl, Mandy B, a.k.a. Pet the Stallion, a.k.a. Pet that pussy, because I hope be playing with my pussy and my other pussy all day, every day. So shout out to all the cat lovers out there. There is a community that I have become a part of that I was not ready for. And I'm with my co-host, my bad. Throwing wow. You, bitch. <laughs> this bitch is, <laughs> well, I am not Carol Baskin. <laughs> Uh, my name is Wheezy, and I am childless. Oof, no, I ain't, I ain't gonna hold you. I literally was just like, ooh, these these states is lifting, like allowing people to like go back to regular life. And although I want to hop on a flight immediately, I'm like, fuck, I can't leave my my kitten for more than a couple days. So I'm looking up like how to fly my cat out with me and looking at the cost oh, of that. Oh, niggas, my homegirl gets flown out by niggas all the time and she'd be like, girl, they be bringing that motherfucking cat Bitch, too. I feel oh like my. I'm going to have to bring this cat with me. <laughs> <laughs> I come with extra pussy, nigga. What's good? 125 a flight. Actually, while, while we may be discussing threesomes <laughs> later on in this episode, I hope my nigga does not want to fuck me and my other pussy because I'm not into bestiality. You know what I mean? Like, I think you're good. That puss- and if he's in the South, Look, he's going to jail. I... I don't wait. Does bestiality send you to jail though? I know. I don't know. Yeah, it's animal yeah. harm. It's illegal. Really yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, to, y'all, you guys hear. You're going to hell, jail. <laughs> you guys hear two <laughs> other voices, and I want to give a solid round of applause and welcome because we are doing a cocktails horrible decisions mashup. So I would like to introduce finally Kiki and Medina <laughs> from the Cocktail hey, Dirty Discussions podcast. What's up, all you cool cats and kids? I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad to have you guys here. We What's have been oh my- friends and peers I'm so happy for to a be long here. time. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Kiki and Medina were part of our first live show in ATL. Y'all was. I've always thank call- you for that. I've always thank called you. them yeah. the horrible decisions of ATL. Like I feel like. <laughs> You know, and and also shout out to Kiki. I know you helped me with kids, um, with the Christmas gifts and shit like that. And Medina, oh, yeah. like I just really, I love what you guys are doing, and we're just so glad to finally have you on. I just can't believe it took two fucking years. Yeah, no That's shit. Crazy. I know, in a quarantine, in a quarantine. <laughs> but shit, also y'all are like the black versions of us because y'all know motherfuckers don't want us to really claim black because we biracial over here. So I don't know mean. what you're I'm talking just about, saying, bitch. bitch. Motherfuckers question our blackness all the fucking time. So we got Medina. Well, and you Kiki. did just buy a cat. Don't do this. <laughs> first off, first off, Fran, Fair Fran, who was our guest last week, is thinking about uh-huh. getting a cat. And also, everyone who has sent me like cat tips and tricks, they are black. Black people own cats, bro. Okay. Yeah, it's a different kind though. What what the crazy <laughs> thing is I'm thinking about getting a kitten too. Like I I'm thought about surprised. it during the quarantine. Okay, can I ask all of y'all's opinions? So I've been asked on Twitter and Instagram now, they want me to make an Instagram for Bodie. No. no do don't it. take it too far. No, wait, is that <laughs> wait, calm down. Wait, wow. that's taking it too far and making a pet page? I think you I'm should do sh- it because his story is so beautiful. You got him from the streets. <laughs> I really did. His story is so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. because she bought the cat for twenty dollars. Yes, that is. A I thought story, it was a bro. crackhead kitty. <laughs> it, I mean, like, who is- I wanted to show you guys a lady that I work with. Oh, damn! Can I Here show you? Go? Oh, yeah, we're recording. So. <laughs> We found, um, well, I'm going to group right. chat with my old coworkers, and they, they were like, yo, so-and-so hit us up. Go check out her Instagram. This is, I legit thought, I was like, oh, my God, this is going to be Mandy. Mandy didn't have a cat yet. This is her IG. <laughs> no, bro, calm down. Calm down. I put. Now, that was my dog. So I put, put Bodie in my story, but he hasn't made my feed yet, okay? Why is Because by the time you get him an Instagram. So, his name is Bodie because... I figure he from the Bronx, right? So he a little hood, he a little ratchet. So it just made me think of a bodega, and so oh. technically it's a it's a nickname for bodega. So Bodie, bodega. That's fucking. Okay. That's a good name, though. Yeah. 
Yeah, because he's That's a, a fucking name. hood rat, and I'm fed up already. I don't know how these motherfuckers have children. He's a hood like cat. the fact that y'all spit whole humans out of your vagina that annoy you to this extent. I couldn't imagine. Who does that? Like, I don't know. <laughs> People who have kids. <laughs> who said that? <laughs> Don't know okay, how kids over here. Tell us about huh? cocktails. Yeah, I guess tell us about cocktails, um, your sexual orientation. Tell us about um, your show. Well, cocktails, dirty discussions. We talk about sex. Um, ours is less educational than y'all's. It's more about us just <laughs> sharing our experiences, telling stories. Sometimes we get drunk on the show, and sometimes that's embarrassing. Sometimes we get very, very personal, almost too personal to the point where mm-hmm. sometimes I'll be like, bruh, I was doing too much. But we mm-hmm. also talk about relationships, all types of relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Sexual relationships, friendships, all types of relationships you could think of. Mm-hmm. Um, I like men and women. Um, I don't want to marry a woman. I want to marry a man, but I do like eating pussy. <laughs> Why are you saying okay, so like you're that? Like me. <laughs> okay. Now, you know, I just kind of go with whatever I feel like that day. I like it all. Um, marriage, yeah, marry a man. I've never dated a woman. I don't think I would actually date a woman. I think it's more fun but to you just have, have sex, sex with yeah. them. Or flirt. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess I think a lot of people always say that when when they tell me they're bisexual. Well, I wouldn't be with a woman. I'm like, I asked for your sexual orientation because I want to have sex. With you. Well, see, I don't know what to call it. Does right? That make I would, me bi. I think. Yeah, I think you that just you are. You're on the. You're different on the scale. You're absolutely bi. So, like, we've talked about our show. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, the Kinsley scale. Mm-hmm. My friends introduced me to it. Um, shout out to Christopher. And basically, it's a. I don't know if it's like eight. Love like eight levels, but yeah. one side is more hetero, one side is more homosexual, and you can change by day, you can change seasonally. Maybe quarantine will have you a little more gay. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Hmm. So speaking <laughs> of quarantine, um, normally we do icebreakers with our guests, but I wanted to kind of open up and do kind of an icebreaker slash catch up and talk about what sex has been like during quarantine for all four of us. Um, so. Me and Kiki actually have stories, um, but before we get there, I did want to ask Medina, are you single? And if you're not, are you having sex during quarantine? So I am single. Um, I thought that I was going to be having so much quarantine that I didn't know what to do with it. Like, I, you couldn't tell me nothing. Like, my team was just really built up. Y'all, quarantine came and I got quarantine the first two days of it. And that nigga just did like he just totally did a whole smooth hit and quit like we were in fucking high school. I was so fucking mad. Wait, like he ghosted you after my ass like just how you get ghosted on quarantine. And I went on live and had a whole rant. We (laughs) talked about it on the show. Like, I know you see the show and I sent him the clip because I was so offended. Like how you get hit and quit during quarantine. You sent him the, clip the of me talking clip shit from the podcast because yes, I was. He did replied. he reply? He didn't reply for a couple of days, but then he sent me a message <laughs> and said that he was having technical <laughs> difficulties. It was some dumb shit. Mm-hmm. Technical difficulties what with his eyes. He, he was look. so busy. How do you say you so busy during a quarantine? What the Is fuck do I look like? No, he's Those an are the engineer, only people busy. a musical engineer at that. The studios is closed, my nigga. Oh, okay. If he's a music, I was gonna say, well, hold on, mm-hmm. maybe, dude. My my old job, my position that I was in, they're working so much harder because it's. I used to work on internet, right? Like sales engineering, so like they're working just as fucking hard. So I was like, well, if he's an engineer, maybe, but not nah, what? Niggas <laughs> just buying more beats. And I was gonna say, even for me, um, I used to be an accountant, and I reached out to my old coworkers, and they've been working even weekends. So seven days a week, um, I worked in the tax department. And even though taxes got pushed to July, they still are working like it's busy season. (laughs) Um, And I'm sure it's taking you longer to do things at home than it does in the workspace. Just because working from home just has your mind in a completely different place. You know what I mean? Very relaxed place. (laughs) So, Weezy, what about... So, okay, so Medina's out here getting ghosted um, during quarantine. Um, Weezy, has there been any change um, with you and your relationship with sex during quarantine? No. I think we're just doing the same shit, but there's been a change with me, nigga. I'm, like, convinced now. So I went for a walk, start talking to this guy outside because we had the same shoes on. Random. He's like, oh, my God, your shoes. I'm like, hey. So then he starts telling me how he works for Ticketmaster. I was like, oh, my God. Well, I'm a podcaster. I cancel all these shows. And he said that everybody is not 
expecting to be back up and running till 2022. Oh, and that's I, longer than the 2021, I thought. That morning, got a call from my old boss who was like, listen, he follows me on Instagram now. He's like, I know you're not working. Do you want to come in as an implementation engineer? Because we're actually busier and I actually need somebody again. <laughs> Like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take care of myself. I could take up to care of myself for like a year. So for what? 2022. <laughs> I said, let, let, me, let me get back in for the job. Nah. <laughs> but I think it's just, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm feeling stuck. You know, my boyfriend's been helping me through it, but I've been working on something, um, uh, just a project, just writing. And now they love it. And the network that wants it is like, we will make a quarantine version of it. And I'm like, I'm good on waiting. I don't give a fuck if niggas think I did nothing. I don't want a quarantine version. They're like, no, we'll send you equipment. I don't want equipment. <laughs> I want someone else to do it. I'm not about to sit in my apartment when I've been working for months making shit to then do it on a webcam. No, it's crazy. But this it is. is like really the reality now. Yeah. Um, it's crazy. Like for, for just podcasts is like, Thinking of, okay, I know certain states are opening back up. So studios may be opening back up because they're not like <clears throat> large event venues. But even figuring out how we're going to continue putting out quality through fucking the internet is hard because things just operate differently mm -hmm. on Wi-Fi, especially because everyone is on their Wi-Fi. Um, so I guess I'll share my story and then we'll get into Kiki because Kiki's story leads to another discussion. Um, but... For me, I want to shout out to Daniel Saint at NSFW. He reached out to me last minute, and I had the opportunity to host a virtual orgy, which is something we have talked about on here. And I just wanted to share with you how interesting it was. They had a DJ. I just want to paint the picture for you guys. Um, I also want to shout out to... How do you host it? So this is, I'm, I'm about to paint the picture, bitch, because I ain't going to lie. I know you and I talked about doing it. Shout out to Daniel. It's a lot of fucking work. I'm not going to hold you to host, like to be on the back end producing it. But so as the host, I pretty much like drop the, hey guys, welcome to the, you know, welcome to tonight. This is the DJ. The DJ was spinning while also had his girlfriend in lingerie, like doing these crazy moves. But then literally by the middle of it, the DJ was fingering oh. and fucking his girlfriend <laughs> while playing tunes. Then me as the host, I got everyone comfortable. So I would like, we let enough people get into the room. So there was about 50 people total in the room, probably about 56 or 58 because there was at least about four couples. Um, but then I just started with a game of truth or dare. So you had to raise your hand whether you were willing to be on camera because okay. at any given point, only four people could show on the camera. So, oh, so you're, it's like a lot of, boys. yeah, in. so it's a lot of watching and you have to raise your hand to be shown to the crowd. But when you're shown to the crowd, you also know that at least 40 or 50 people are watching you. So here's what we got to watch. We watched a couple do wax play where the guy burned a candle and dropped wax mm -hmm. onto her ass. And you sh saw her shake every time the wax fell onto her ass. We had one girl, shout out to Aqua Diva. I guess she's a dancer. She got on the pole. I was able to request a song. She took all of my cash app money. It was, on, it was, <laughs> only, it was only $17 of the balance <laughs> left, but I still gave her that $17. Um, <laughs> the balance. <laughs> it was the balance. I was giving her my cash app dollars. Then we had another couple. Shout out to them because they are Horrible Decisions listeners. I'm not going to put their names out there, but Weezy and I actually met them at our very first live show in New York. So this couple ended up choosing Dare. I'll, I'll tell you, bitch, we're going to have to bring them on. Hold. I just got to ask their permission. But we got them on. And in the Dare, he had to go to the refrigerator and pick out a food to lick off of a body part on her. So, bitch, they had, fuck, That's they fun. had whipped cream. So he's licking whipped cream off. Then they kissed each other. And then also by the end, there was full-fledged fucking. So... There was full-fledged sucking dick. A woman had a mask on, and all you saw was her sucking the fuck out of her nigga's dick. Then you just saw two two or three couples total had sex on camera. How black was it? How white so was it? So I would say it was mixed because the stripper was black. The couple was, I would say, Indian and Latina. There was a guy. There, <laughs> I, would I would say. say I don't want to. They were they were, a caramelized they were brown. Onion color. <laughs> they were brown. Um, yeah, the, like I said, the, the dancer was black with an afro. Um, 
the couples that had sex, the three couples were white. Um, and then there was another guy, I would say he was Middle Eastern. I had him strip and dance. So he was just letting his little dang a lang slang. Oh, that's dope. So it well, I think it. the good thing about Daniel, though, is he's said even on our platform when he came on um, that diversity was important to him. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It was a super diverse like white shit. Like for some reason, two of the couples were dealing with nipple Did clamps. I've never dealt with nipple clamps. I don't like those. And so I was just like, okay, this is the white person aspect of this shit. Cause I just, but it's not. Mm. We are destigmatizing yeah, but, things for the so, black no. community. Okay, well, bitch, ha- are you out here playing with nipple clamps? Kiki, I would do it. Y'all with I just clamps? never had someone I have be like, gags. "Hey, let me clamp your nipples." But if That's they did, I feel like I would like it. Still, I don't because I don't like mine play with that much. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, like bro, whole life. I've never had someone clamp. be like, hey, let me clamp your nipples. Like <laughs> see, even when you say it, wait, okay, so what is what is the black way to say let me clamp your let nipples? Me play with them titties. See? Mm-hmm. No, that's the whole hey! tip. That's the whole point. Hey, ho. <laughs> <laughs> that's the whole tip, ho. Okay, so so Kiki, if Let me pitch them titties. Kiki, if you can share with us um maybe a story that you have of yeah, sex Kiki. during quarantine. You got any stories? I do. I have a few, actually, because I said quarantine was okay. because quarantine wasn't going to keep me down. Um, Okay, so this was actually part of my cocktail, but I'll revisit it for you guys. Um, So basically, the other day I was really going through it. I was extremely horny. I was feeling upset. I text some friends who I thought could relate and we were all agreeing that it's just too much we were about to make bad decisions we were like you know niggas gonna have to share horrible yeah. right horrible, horrible decisions, decisions bitch. yeah um i was i made some and so did some other people anyway so by the grace of god or maybe it wasn't god probably wasn't but my one of my fuck buddies calls me right nice guy i enjoy hanging out with him he's funny as fuck right so he's like, well, what are y'all doing? Are you by yourself? I was like, no, my friend Drea has been here because uh, we decided to be quarantine roommates because we just didn't know how long the shit was going to last and we was going to go crazy, right? So she's been here. He was like, right. well, if y'all want, y'all can come over. So I know I'm not supposed to be leaving the house, but I did. Um, so we leave and we go over there. And um, I mean, at least you like left the house to just go to right. Another. And the last time I went to his house, he sprayed me with Lysol. He's always a very clean person, so I figured, <laughs> you know, that's it's probably- very sweet. Of him. The Lysol gonna be with kill niggas. Niggas is really spraying their face <laughs> and body parts. Spray. He sprayed me I through a door. I can't believe that you. I can't believe that you giving pussy to a nigga that's Lysol in your ass. Please, I wanted some dick and I got it. Okay, um, I'm not buying cats from the crackheads to cure my loneliness. Don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that. Shout out to Bodie. <laughs> maybe, maybe you wish you could be lying so exactly. Tell her. So anyway, um, we go over there. We're hanging out and everything. And then somehow, I don't know what ha- Somehow. Oh, I remember. He sent me a text message. That's what started it. I don't think I said this on our show. But he sent me a text message. And he was like, take your panties off. I want to eat your pussy right now. So I was like, That's Oop. sexy. And I was about to. But then I was like, you know what? let's go to the sauna first. So he was like, yeah, okay, we'll go to the sauna. So, so, and, 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 th- and this is while you're yeah. at his house It's downstairs. Okay. Okay. So I was like, Dre, you want to come to the sauna? Flex on us. <laughs> and our poor <laughs> niggas. Who have well, nothing. I got no niggas. But some sunlight more? coming out. <laughs> Them niggas got heat. <laughs> That's all I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we go down there and he was like, uh, let me get y'all some towels. So we just took all of our clothes off because it's like, it's going to be hot in there anyway. Right. Next thing I know, my foot, he said he y'all did, up. and it was fine. Um, but he starts <laughs> massaging my feet. And then I look over, Drea has nothing on. She has taken the towel and wrapped it around her braids. And she's sitting up there posing, just titties out, pussy out, everything's out. So I was just like, okay, well, I think we're done in the sauna. So everything was out. <laughs> everything was out. So I think we're done in the sauna. Uh, let's go to the shower. So I really like taking showers at his house. But every time I leave, I look crazy because I think I'm in a commercial and I want to wash my hair. So at this point, I had clip-ins in and they weren't even good quality clip-ins. But, you know, it's been a struggle because quarantine. So we're in the shower and 
I got in first, he gets in. And then Drea was like, she was looking like, can I come in? And so he was like, you're not going to come in. She was. <laughs> but she she's wasn't sure. Was she looking friend. like she wasn't she sure if such, he was cool with her? She's a real one. Like you might like square up with her? Well, I'm not going to do that. Mm-hmm. But um, she was like, well, Kiki, <laughs> do you mind? Can I? I was like, we damn you know, near live together. We the marrier. It's a very large space. So after a while. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Another humble flex. <laughs> A very I had large to come back shower. To my shower. Right. I didn't want to come home. But anyway, <laughs> um, so we're in there and like everybody's kissing. There's a lot of pussy licking. He bathed us too. I forgot about that part. And I'll skip some of the details, but we ended up in the bed. That but is I feel very like sexy. he couldn't really handle two women because I don't think that that was his original plan. It was just going to be me. So at one point, he had dick for yeah, one. Yeah, he had dick for one, not two. So uh, at some point, he comes back with baby oil, and Dre was making all of these demands about who needs to pour what where and all this stuff. And it was just a great time. And then he woke us up in the morning, uh, he gave us the bed. Woke Were y'all still in- greasy? I was, okay. yeah, um, but I like that baby <laughs> I really oil wanted feeling. To know that too. It feels good. Uh, so anyway, he woke me up in the morning with breakfast. He cooked us a beautiful breakfast spread. We had waffles, chicken, Tell him it sausage, was an ego. You said it was bacon. An ego waffle. It was an ego waffle. That's still a waffle. <laughs> it is. <laughs> But bitch, it wasn't homemade, ho. Oh. Bitch, hold on. You ain't tell me this when you it's said the story. You said it was I didn't tell you a Belgian and waffle. Bitch, you said chicken. And then I the didn't, chicken I didn't did not know come the waffle from Popeye's. Was okay, he cooked the chicken because it was really left over from the night before. But besides. So he cooked. Well, I guess that makes up for the box. <laughs> for the I box, box waffles, waffles bitch. Every now and again. It's all right. He had a sauna. Okay. <laughs> and anyway, I'm talk- we- here I am talking shit and my nigga looks at me every morning like what you about to bake <laughs> okay. so, look I appreciate it it was a that kind nigga, gesture that nigga could pop a tart um, excellent customer service five out of five stars highly recommend he I brought the you. hookah to the bedroom which were hookah hoes lots of types of hoes but we had that it was just a great time and then we left and we came back in a day <laughs> well y'all did y'all feel weird mm-mm so I wanted to talk about that because real quick, if y'all don't know, I am currently in a group chat called Eskimo Fam, and we decided that because we are all friends, let's figure out if we have fucked the same nigga at any mm-hmm. point in time. So it's been determined that while a lot of us are Eskimo sisters, me and Kiki were not Eskimo sisters until she called me to tell me this story. And then we realized because of this story, we mm-hmm. now share a body. Um, but it's not <laughs> it's the nigga. It's the Drea. <laughs> <laughs> so Drea was supposed to be my girlfriend in the mix. And now I feel like I had to share her with, with Kiki. And I don't know how I feel because now I'm like, wait, I didn't came at Kiki like, so are y'all sleeping? Like, are y'all about to cuddle? Like, I really felt some type of way. I'm she did because she FaceTimed me the other day because we were in bed together, me and Drea. This is before anything happened. We had really just slept. And she was like, wait a minute, Drea in the bed next to you? What's going on? I was like, girl, calm down, relax. I only have one bed. So just know, I, I just know. Hold on, but when you told the Drea story, well, you didn't say her name. At yeah, the time. I didn't share that. But you were like, I really miss Dick. I realized I can't be with a bitch. No, so I, need I ain't dick. gonna hold you. So, so when I had fucked Drea, me and her were even thinking Call. of a nigga we could come to join us that night. But every time, like, I get into a threesome, I get hot and bothered. But I really want to be penetrated. And when me and Drea fucked, bitch, I ain't have the strap. She ain't have like. Oh, a full strap or nothing like that so I was just like damn I really want to get fucked but Drea was so much fun so now that I know she done fucked you and one of your niggas I done and told she said Drea owe owe me one. a threesome bitch fuck the bullshit y'all really got a whole sex oh wait you gotta fuck on. one of her niggas now, this now. it's just a motherfucking <laughs> when are y'all going Medina? to join the club when are we you gotta tag her Ooh, in Hey, we both fuck white boys. Medina, let's, let's get it. He needs to have a man a bun. I'm ready Oreo anytime. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not going to Hold lie. on, wait. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say this is, was, this is funny because I don't think a lot of niggas, like, I know a lot of guys maybe find out they're messing with the same girls and it's easier. And normally they think we're so emotional. And, like, literally we over here like, well, bitch, we fucked, and since you had a threesome, bitch, you owe me a threesome, and bitch, I, I like, my niggas no. got big dicks. You want to come fuck like my that. big dick, nigga? Like, 
Okay, not saying that your nigga don't have a big dick. Look, and Kiki's like, well, sis, you be dealing with gargantuans, so I don't want to fuck them big dick niggas. I just know that after all of this talk about Eskimo sisters and you telling me the details about you and Drea and then you, Mandy, sharing the story about you and Drea, when I went to sleep last night, I had a dream. <laughs> I had a wet dream that <laughs> me and Mandy <laughs> were stuck in a desert. And for some reason, I was like falling into sand dunes and there was sand like falling over me and then mandy was behind me and she was pulling my legs and you started eating my pussy and we were drenched in sweat wait, and wait, then first of all bitch <laughs> hold on and then wait, I, I woke what? up and i was like we were sweating and i was like why did i have this type of dream it's the sauna it's the sauna that's what made me wait be you had a dream you. that you were falling into sand dunes and i was yeah. so thirsty that i was trying to eat your you pussy. were recording you with were mandy and it was juices. the sauna that better be it bitch <laughs> what'd you that say better be it. what'd you say i'm gonna tell you right now me and medina gonna have <laughs> sex one day let me, let me tell you how i know because <laughs> me, me and my nigga call medina right and she's fucking lit <laughs> And no, she's sleep, oh, but yeah, she's tell, like tell lit. On her, oh, she tell on her right now. I want to know. <laughs> so this bitch is dead ass knocked out. She would have no makeup on. This was not like she, I, she even had time. It was three rings. She had full on lingerie on. I was like, yeah, I just sleep like that. Oh my God. So he was like, damn, you look real good. She was like, y'all are crazy. <laughs> I and see that's what that. bitches be saying before you fuck. We're going to have Wait, really good uh, sex, so, easy. Medina, you're get, wait, wait, Medina. She's adding her boyfriend in. So you ready for the threesome off rip or what? I got well. I definitely feel like we have to all go to dinner first so I can see the vibe. I got a vibe with the Weezy. Nigga. Weezy loves taking bitches but you, to but dinner. You know what? Hold on. But Medina knows I'm not tacky, so I would never, ever <laughs> just be like, "Come over." No, I'm all about the energy and the vibe. And plus, you know, we all just gonna get lit, <laughs> shrooms, drunk, whatever happens. I don't know. But I just know Medina will do it. <laughs> energy, energy, Kia, uh, Kiki, huh? or Kiki and Drea, I'm about to hit them with the, um, I need your full names and birthday. We You're fly now. fly here and meet me here. <laughs> I'm going to be flying y'all out. I love having Y'all getting flued out. Yeah, got a thought so over wait, here. I have a question. Would you, would Mandy and Kiki, would y'all ever have a threesome, you Kiki, Mandy, and Drea, would y'all ever have a three girl threesome or do you need a nigga? I need a Ooh. nigga. I feel like for that, I would I need, need a too nigga. too much pussy. I need a nigga. And I'm not going to lie. It's funny that Kiki even was talking about how Drea gives direction. Like, this is, bro, y'all know I'm normally the mm -hmm. dom. Bitch, Drea dom the fuck out of me. She was telling me what to do. And I was like, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Like, Drea is very dominant in the bedroom. And so I feel like I need that masculine energy just in there somewhere so I can feel like I'm in control of something shit y'all think I'm a dom Drea Drea will tell you what the fuck to do like, like she what like come over here and eat this pussy <laughs> no like she she de she decides when we're changing mm -hmm. positions you lay right here. she would tell me if I needed to add fingers in she's like no hit me right here or like she direct she will tell you exactly what the <laughs> yeah. fuck to Weezy, do you gonna have to be the director that whole was like okay well, I let niggas direct, but I was just going to say, when Mandy said that, so I just did an episode with Kiki for their Patreon, and she literally said the same thing about Drea. Oh, yeah. Drea's very, like, directive, bro. She was like, she, she was bossing me, me around. This, we weren't even fucking him anymore. She's still bossing him around. Go get me some ice cream. Go get me some more baby oil. <laughs> Come on, Sparkly. That's my threesome yeah. personality. Actually, you know what? My threesome personality, I'm very, like, if I'm not that into her, but I'm just into the energy, like... I'm probably the one who's more bossy. Mm -hmm. But when I'm into her, I like it to just be like me and the chick and like the nigga has to like mm -hmm. almost interrupt and then tell us what to do. I get super mm -hmm. just, okay. you know, kumbaya I about it. I just be doing everything <laughs> to everybody. <laughs> I'm a box eater. I, I like 69ing and then a dick just yeah, goes in no on surprise. one side. You don't know who's going to get it. Mm hmm. <laughs> yeah like it was me i hate y'all so much anyways i want to get into we are going to do a double version of vanilla shit and this is because we have a cocktail mashup and something that you can expect when you listen to the cocktails podcast is something that they do called weird sex so for our vanilla shit i decided to find um something that was weird in the news but also give you guys another thing about vanilla shit during the coronavirus so for the first one it says that a dad to be discovers that his pregnant wife is his half sister, but they want to keep the baby. A man claims that he is 
that he and his pregnant wife have found out that they are actually brother and sister. A posting on Reddit, the man who was 24 from England claimed that the couple had been horrified to discover that they are actually half siblings after being together for eight years. Um, he wrote that he didn't want to reveal how they found out, but they added that they had confirmed um, that they were half siblings mm -hmm. during a DNA test. He explained that only his wife's mom had admitted to him at a rough moment who her daughter's biological father was, and the pieces of the puzzle kind of <laughs> fell into place. I It's funny because I think mm -hmm. I saw this conversation going around Twitter. I want to know, Wheezy, or Kiki or Medina, the person that you're currently fucking, Weezy, your boyfriend, Kiki, the person you just had a threesome, what would you do if you found out that biologically y'all was related? Absolutely not. First, tell no. I would have a seizure. Would you would tell them. And second, break up. Oh, you would break no. up? This Bruh. is too much. Even if you're in love with family, how do we even move forward? I mean, yeah, and I want to have kids children. Kids might come out fucked up. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Do you already? So I was going to say, I would break up with him because I want to have kids eventually. And I feel like the chances of, you know, something. I also know I'm good. But <laughs> we um, what you if, we already, if we already had a kid and it was eight years. Well, no, they found it. So they've been married for eight years and they're pregnant now. This is their first baby. And they just found out that they're brothers they've been married for they've been years. married okay well you asked me about my nigga right <laughs> okay, now so yeah, i'm him, asking but... you about your nigga now no, like good. you really like him if you found out that he was your brother by some mysterious way maybe no bitch i'm not staying with him what the f no uh, you gonna stay i mean i feel, no! like, I feel like if i really like I know somebody you like you gonna stay with your bro but, but my my half bro like my my yes, my daddy that's was still a brother. I mean, what if my daddy was a hoe and just was out here having twenty my kids? My daddy is a hoe. Mine too. And well, he he's probably too. does have Mine many kids, too. but I'm not gonna get with my brother. And that's why I need to start asking niggas to take the ancestry DNA test, so it'll just pop up and send me an alert. And I'm telling you right now, if I found out that I was fucking my brother, I am gonna change my whole life around. I'm giving my life to God. I'm I am. You're gonna see a whole different Medina. Wait, Everybody gonna be like, "What happened to Medina?" So your life ain't to God <laughs> right now, bitch. I I ain't been baptized. Y'all don't judge me. I was It's going to go from cocktails to holy tales. <laughs> holy tales. Shit. <laughs> I'm going to change my whole life around. I would be like, wow, I'm really doing too much. I need to talk more and get to know niggas I'm better. I'm really doing too much. Oh, oh, wow. So the second. I'm embarrassed just to Really? Hear. I mean, I ain't going to hold you like. But eight years and I was pregnant. Okay. And this is but like the, the love of my life. And then I just find out we we only half siblings. Maybe, bro. Like, it's only half. Mm -mm, I'm giving the baby. No, are you gonna tell your kids, Mandy? Are you naked? What? Are you naked? No, I'm not naked. I got a little tube top. Oh, Them I got my little. Oh. Doesn't it seem my little tube top? Bitch? I feel like YouTube is gonna ban us. No, they're not, <laughs> bitch. These are shoulders, and if they ban us, then we have a class action lawsuit, sis. <laughs> Because these are just shoulders. You are not going to discriminate against me because of my shoders. Okay, your shoulder tits. No, see your shoulder. there's no tits, your, bro. I barely, tits, I barely have cleavage. This is like clee. This is clee with no vidge. Okay. <laughs> um, the vidge is at the bottom. Yeah, the vidge is at the bottom. So I wanted to get into our double vanilla shit. Okay. Also, if you guys are just listening to us for the first time, coming here from cocktails, we have a segment called Vanilla Shit where we do sex in the news. Weezy found this one from Vice.com. It, I love this one. It says that. Do, so, do you want to read it, Weezy? Yeah, yeah I got it pulled up. Go ahead. I didn't know if you had it because you had the other one. Yep. So, by the way, y'all, I just want you to know that I am uh, so concerned. Like, I've, I'm known for interrupting on this show, and I'm sorry, but I get super excited. And I, I keep trying to look and hope that there's not a one or two second delay before everybody <laughs> no, talks. We, like, we're doing good right now. <laughs> I feel good. <laughs> Okay, a California sex toy company just donated its medical fetish stock to hospitals. So as we all know, either, you know, we're down on masks and shields and gloves. So this company, XR is the, uh, is the name of it, Sex Toy Distributing, donated the face shields, the gloves that are actually used for mm. anal play, for playing out role play, and the latex <laughs> that you can put on to completely cover yourself like, for surgery and shit. Now, they're not saying that like doctors have used this, but the main issue with it is like we all might be using the same mask. Right. However, in the hospitals, they need to be swapping them out constantly. So, 
these people are donating that. And I guess if they run out of like hazmat suits and shit, then uh, I think it's hilarious because I think we probably have talked about this kink or fetish before, like kind of like the doctor play. So basically there's a whole fetish about wearing the mask, the latex, the gloves and feeling like you're in the hospital and you get just imagine though like you're in the hospital let's just say emergency room because oh, whatever right and then the doctor comes in and he's got on a mask and it's got a little red x at the bottom and you're like huh is it like a blue cross red shield like, what's going on? <laughs> what is that what's that design nigga and then imagine if they come in with black gloves <laughs> up to the elbow and you're just like oh this is kind of porny. Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever been fingered into with a it? glove on? Like no. a, like, okay, I no, haven't. It feels no, really I good. I don't. <laughs> can I, can you please yeah, share why that? Can you share how so, you got fingered with a glove? Well, no, <laughs> that, you didn't get mad at him? What is this? You got to it, it share the it story, man. It was a woman. Share the story. And so I met this girl. I told this story a long time ago. I think I was on cocktails, but I had left out a large portion of it. I, when I had <laughs> moved to Miami, I didn't know anybody. I was horny as shit, so I got on Craigslist. And you know how you can look for sex and, like, pay for sex on Craigslist? Do you remember when I told this story? Mm-hmm. I was that desperate. So I met a girl who was a stripper and she was like selling her pussy and I was not (laughs) going to pay for it. So she was like, well, send me some real pictures of you and send me a video so I know you're real. And if you're actually this pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But they weren't the dusty kind. It can't have the dust on them. Do you you know? The powder. Bitch, that means you got. Should I should I get the dishwasher? I was about to say she got she got she got fucked with dishwashing (laughs) gloves. So. I got the dishwasher. Yes. They got a stick over here like ready when you are, Medina. So, so so I went and I met her. She, I sent her the pictures and the videos and shit. Mm-hmm. And she was like, oh, okay, you're really pretty. I won't charge you. I was like, all right, cool. Mm-hmm. So I went to go meet up with her. I thought I was going to die. I literally was like, if something happens to me, could you just imagine like someone calling your mom and telling them the story of you going to meet somebody for sex and you got killed or robbed or something? Exactly. You're going to be embarrassed. Actually, well, I that's could. not what happened. My I mom would in. believe it. <laughs> Yep. My mom would be like, what? I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. The, the, the flute out no, or the meet in a stranger off a data nap and that's how I die. I don't think it would come as a surprise to anybody that knows me. Not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. I'm going to be like, my mama would Mandy be like, died. what the fuck? Where was, where was she at? Oklahoma? I knew what that was she nigga. doing? Check her Why do y'all keep do? bringing Oklahoma. up Oklahoma? I'd be so mad. I don't, know. I don't know. Oklahoma is like a state that keeps getting brought up. But yeah, bro, if I just mysteriously die in like Utah, Jazz, Portland, Trailblazers, Bronco, you Denver, was out there fucking. Broncos, <laughs> niggas know why I was in those random ass <laughs> fucking cities. <laughs> so, okay. Exactly. So wait, back to you, Medina. Long story short, I get to her hotel. I check it out because I'm not a dumb bitch. I'm kind of dumb, but I'm not dumb, dumb. So I go into the bathroom. I check the shower, make sure ain't no niggas going to jump out and rob me. Check the closet all, under the bed, all that shit. We're laying on the bed. We just start kissing. We go right into it. I was horny as shit. She goes, have you ever been fingered with gloves on? And I was like, no. She was like, can I do it to you? I was like, sure. Maybe she was really planning on killing me. I don't know what happened, but she put a glove on, snapped it on her wrist, and started fingering oh, me. Oh, no. She, was, she, just a, she was just a real sex worker. She was protected. It was yeah. very sexy. Like, it was really sexy, and it felt really good. Like, I would do it all over again. <laughs> Look, I think all of us are looking. I would do it all over again. Wait, all of us are just like, so getting fingered with a glove felt. Amazing. And it was, it has to be a black glove so you can see like all of the juices. And then she like licked it oh, off. It was really sexy. And hot. then she licked yeah. it off. And then she licked it off. I don't know why, off. but once I found out the glove was black, I was in. Yeah. <laughs> it was a black glove. Because like imagine, you know, like if you getting creamy and shit. Ooh. Yeah. And she let it get real okay, juicy. Fun. I was like, all right, me. Well. I'm into the amen. <laughs> you nasty as hell. You on Craigslist, fucking Craigslist killers. With black gloves. <laughs> Yo, honestly, I've heard so many Craigslist stories. Shout out to one of my, my, my great friends. I, I don't even want to say her name because she gets so embarrassed at this story. But I went to her birthday party like two years ago. And there was, she was like, oh, my God, this is my longest friend. We've been friends for nine years. I'm like, how'd you guys meet? And they both get weird. And I'm like, I know she ain't fuck her. Uh-huh. So the next week or something, she's like, I didn't say anything because... Like, I really wanted to go out one night, and mind you, she's black. This ain't some white girl shit. She's like, I really wanted to go out one night, and I just put a post out, and we went dancing, and we met on Craigslist, and now we're friends nine years later. It's so weird because there is, like, a friend's 
space in Craigslist yeah, too. Like, yeah. so you can meet people for sex. You can meet people, bitch. Because I'm not going. Well, I don't think you could do sex anymore. No, right? not anymore. But I know, like, I I found a lot of my hair girls on Craigslist. I found a lot. Oh, of it's a risk on Craigslist. But it's, it's worth it. It is a risk. It is a risk. Um, but yeah, like Craigslist has the tea. But to find a friend on Craigslist. To find a bitch on Craigslist, how desperate? Well, I ain't bitch, gonna hold you. That's how? what she said it was. My motherfucking ass was desperate. Can I be honest with y'all? Um, not that desperate. You don't think that's desperate? <laughs> Maybe. Okay, let me tell you why. When we were in Puerto Rico, the first time that we went on vacation together, right? So this was one of the times where we just didn't take someone home, but we were like fucking lit. It's like 7 a.m., we feeling nasty. Bitch, this Adderall I had is running through me. I'm like, damn, let's fuck somebody. He's like, he's like, oh, damn, where are we going to find him? I'm like, I don't know. So I hit up one of my homegirls who I know is a hoe. And I'm like, yo, you know any bitches in Puerto Rico? She's like, yeah, let me see how much. So she don't fucking hit me back. So I'm like, can we go on Craigslist? Like, how do you look for a bitch? So we on Eros. Nigga, we fell asleep looking for bitches. He was like, be like uh, that Maria. It be like that. <laughs> you would, hey, you so would say Maria. Why people that, wrote why Maria back. Maria had to be your first name, though. Because I am trying to not not say a name that doesn't relate to the culture. I am trying to be of the culture. So if I'm talking about Puerto Rico, maybe, for example, if I talked about Atlanta, I would say Rashida. Uh-uh, don't, don't do this. Don't do this. Rashida. Okay, so, so wait, what wait, 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 wait. What's, what's a New York name or a Florida name since you went to Rashida for Georgia? Oh, Ooh, a Florida That's Maria name. again. Or Juan Carlos. <laughs> Uh, we'll go, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Aquita. I had a lot of Aquita friends. A lot of Aquitas. I ain't gonna. Hold I had a lot of Nikita friends. Um, and New York names. I don't really know. New York. I just feel like Jessica because that takes up all of the the ethnic, like the Dominicans, the Puerto Ricans. I feel like there's a Jessica or Jessica and everything. White Jessica. There's, there's white. I'm Jessica. just stuck oh, on when you is. said you hit your friend up and you knew she was a hoe, and I just wonder if I've ever been hit up. And they're like, "Hit up Medina, she a hoe." That's what I was thinking about too. <laughs> You're that girl. No, yep. no, 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 no. She's oh. a professional hoe. It doesn't matter. It doesn't I, matter. You know, actually, to, to be honest with you, I've hit up Ali um, XX. We've had her on the show when I was like out somewhere. I think I was in Miami. I was like, "Yo, like, what's up?" Like, because I didn't really want to like mm-hmm. court a bitch and. It wasn't in the mood for that kind of sex with a woman. Like, I wanted something more raw and rough and, like, come through the hotel room and let's fuck. So I wanted to pay. Hit up Allie. But the other girl, I know there's a hoe. Um, she gave me some numbers. And it's funny because we woke up at 4 p.m. And they're like, do you still want <laughs> Did they come? us to come? I'm, I'm not going to lie. No, Medina, we're Kiki, like, we're hoes. shit, Wheezy, me. I think at one point we were hit up as the oh, hoe no. friends. I ain't even going to. I know for a certain fact. For the last decade, I'm everyone's hoe friend that they be like, my boyfriend, I don't know if he, like, once they get boyfriends, I know that I'm the hoe friend because I'm the friend they niggas don't want them to be around. So I already know what it is. It happens. Even if I'm not the paid hoe friend, I'm the hoe friend where they're like, nope, I don't want you hanging with her no more. Uh, But anyways, I I feel like... I'm a good hoe. Like, I feel like niggas be like, I know you ain't shit, but like, just don't put that shit on my girl. Be like, no, I respect your unity. I was about to say, like, I'm a hoe, but I got degrees. I'm going to make sure your, 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 your girlfriend mm-hmm. getting some money, like, or something. No. <laughs> Whether we fuck a nigga or not. No <laughs> shit. Anyways, I wanted to get into our next segment. Our next segment is called Hoard d'oeuvre. So during this segment, we give sex tips. And this one I found, which ironically I found before coming across one of our home mails, which I'm going to tie into. And then I want to ask you guys if you've ever done it before you give sex tips. So the sex tip or the hors d'oeuvre for this episode is dry humping. So dry humping might be thought of as an awkward teen activity from high school days, but as many people find, dry humping as an adult actually slaps, ho. The stimulation is on point and it's not too direct in case you have an overly sensitive clitoris and the hotness of keeping your clothes on and still pawing at each other is a mental turn on too. Um, I guess before I get into one of our listeners' stories about dry humping, which she's actually calling it a fetish, I wanted to know if Wheezy, Medina, or Kiki, any of you guys were into dry humping. You know, it sounds like a childish game. And I used to do it when I was a kid, when me and my friends would play boyfriend and girlfriend. We would always hump each other. But even 
house. Yeah, well, we called it boyfriend and girlfriend. Oh, okay. I called it house. But I called it house. I even to this day, I love a good foreplay. And I love humping a knee. I love humping anything for real. Even when I go to sleep by myself, I have a boyfriend pillow. I be humping my pillow. It feels. I would hump good. my pillow. Mm-hmm. I will hump a knee. Like not mm-hmm. like a fast. Yeah, that kind of feels, feels good. You just is your clit. Is your clit super sensitive? I think it's become super sensitive because like I, when I use my vibrator, I naturally start on level six or eight. I don't gradually get to the high levels. I just start oh, on the high level. So, Because <laughs> mine is, and I feel like that's why I like humping because I don't even need the actual friction. I mean, it just needs to be like, it I mean, it's gotten to the point where I can come without like the, I don't even need you to penetrate me. Like I can hump and come. With a man there. I mean, mm-hmm. I feel like, or I feel like, not. like I get, I get a little hot just by like, rubbing up on a man i don't say i would do humping but like if we're out in public if i just sit and you know most of the niggas they waist come up to my face so i'm really like rubbing with their thighs my pussy on their thighs but like i'll like glide it over them and that makes i think just the body contact yeah. actually turns me on you know what i mean do you like humping Kiki? um no I don't. Uh, like, no, I bitch. want to have the dick inside of me or some fingers. I want um, body parts to touch without the clothes. I don't just want to be rubbing. It's going to call. I don't, I don't like I'm too old for that. I love I it. It's not like a fast. How hump. long do y'all be it's humping for? Like grind. 10 minutes. Yeah, it's not a fast hump. Bro, I literally did it Saturday. Like I was ovulating and he was working on some just side project mm-hmm. he has going on. And I just came up to him and I was like, I know you don't want to fuck me because you just fucked me. And he was like, chill, like you're good. Like, of course, I always want to fuck you. He's like, just give me a minute. I was like, okay. So I just told him to like relax with his laptop on his uh-huh. stomach and keep working. And I was just humping that nigga. And I can't. I was like, I'll still fuck you though. Oh. <laughs> I like humping. I'm not going to lie. Humping is cool. So I wanted to share this. I'm not going to share her name, but real quick. Um, and this falls into kind of our whole confession that we normally mm-hmm. do at the end, but it tied into this hors d'oeuvre. So I wanted okay. to share it. Um, they refer to the fetish as a dry hump. Um, she says, Hi, Mandy and Wheezy. I'm a big fan of the show, and thank you so much for continuing podcasting during COVID. It makes a difference for my anxious ass and keeps Monday my favorite day of the week. I am writing in to share a fetish that I'm wondering if you have spoken about on your show. I would be happy to talk about it, but side note, here it goes. I'm a queer woman, and I rarely sleep with men. I prefer women for mostly everything as far as anything pertaining to interpersonal intimate relationships. However, when I want to quench my dry, humping thirst... I prefer a man in the equation. It's very frustrating, however, because I'm rather masculine and I don't really prospect um, prospect men, generally generally speaking, and rely on porn. Also, sex with men feels more like using a toy for me. So I have to be transparent about that with potential male partners. However, most seem to care about feelings involved, etc. And I don't like the idea of of being my toy definitely humbly broke stereotypes of me. So I end up having to recycle the same porn all the time. And it's getting to the point where I'll replay a few seconds in a sex scene when the guy's bulge is still in his pants, hard as fuck, and a girl is rubbing it. I also love grinding with men on occasion. I love the sensation of them getting hard on me. A part of it definitely pertains to the idea that I'm turning them on. And I'm also a top, so I feel a sense of control. Um, and she gets into this feeling and I guess it was, it's interesting cause I have the idea that maybe she's more dominant or stud projecting. Maybe she could be a femme lesbian as I well. Mean, humping is scissoring. It is. But she real. said that she really only likes to hump with men. And she said that I think she gets the, she gets turned on by feeling them get harder in their clothes, even though she doesn't want to go forward with penetration with the guy. I don't think that's weird. It's like she's mm-hmm. attracted to the penis being there. She just doesn't want it in her. That makes sense yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah, I guess that kind of makes sense. I actually don't like scissoring. Like, I like humping, oh, yeah, I but like I've that. scissored before, and I don't like it. I'm like, just we're just both, like, grinding our vaginas, and I'll be like, <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> you gotta get it when it's good. You gotta get, like, uh, yeah. I'd okay, wait. So, wait, 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 wait. So, <laughs> I was about to say, well, we're on a hors d'oeuvre tip. Before we get to where both of you guys drop your sex tips uh-huh. before we get into the horrible decision, Weezy, do you have a scissoring tip for Medina to where she may enjoy scissoring more? Just wetness. Like, I like you have to make sure it's, like, low-key, like, lathered. Like, 
if your spit is lathered up in the pussy enough, like you're gliding better. Because the thing about um, scissoring is that friction isn't always the best thing. Mm. Like I think with sex with a man, sometimes friction could be good. Like condoms can be too wet and you may not feel enough. But with scissoring, I think because you have more room, like it can get on your thigh, you can get messy, like just lubing it up is good. What's, um, I'm curious to know. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have any sex sex tips? Do we have any sex tips? Um, I would say stretch because let me tell y'all one time I had to invest in the chiropractor for about a year because I got sciatica after I was, uh, fucking this one nigga in Houston. And I mean, I don't regret it. Would I do it again? I have. Wait, a nigga made you get Sciat- what is so it's, you said yeah. sciatica. So sciatica. it's like a nerve in your back that ends up getting it's a, it's a nerve in your back and it ends up getting pinched or something like that and shit is just out of whack. But it it feels like a shoot. He really broke he your did. back, bitch. <laughs> and I thank him for it all the time. But um, it sends a shooting pain down like your back and it went all the way down to my ankle. I was walking funny. I have it right <laughs> now. Look. Dude, y'all haven't seen I, me adjusting. I didn't know what you were my doing. My back is killing me. What if I got sciatica? I feel like you might have it, girl. Bitch. I diagnosed my. So basically, I got sciatica or cancer. I hope oh. not cancer, but yeah, um, de- definitely uh, stretch. Uh, drink lots of water beforehand so you can be extra juicy. So my sex tip is, and this is a lot of y'all are gonna hear this and be like, "No, fuck no." I really like you know booty play. And if you don't want to let, like, I love it. And I just want everyone to know that, like, if you don't want a dick in your ass, lately there was a married couple that I was fucking with and her husband loved, like, she wouldn't let him do it, but I would let him do it. He loved, like, putting his finger so deep in my ass to where, like, I literally felt like I could come in, felt, felt like I could feel it coming up out of my mouth. Like, he put it so deep in there and it didn't hurt because it's a finger. It's not like a dick. And it was the sexiest thing. It made my pussy so wet, like, literally dripping wet. And he would just like tease me like oh booty hole booty hole like it is such a great sex tip to get things started now every now and again you did might he get a say little those poop. words did he say booty hole booty hole he, <laughs> he didn't say booty hole booty hole but you he said just what go, about you, poop sometimes he would get some shit on his fingers but you just you know keep a little wet wipe on the side so you can wipe it off and then start the sex it is incredible can i just tell y'all y'all don't know but medina's nickname is maduna because <laughs> I think she really like has scat like scat is a fetish for her, but she hasn't admitted to it. She just doesn't realize because it. I really think that she really enjoys shit being around. <laughs> do you not have gay male friends? But do do not. I do. I really don't. You need no. them to teach you about your asshole because they might get it. You can stop. That. I told her like when I have niggas play with my ass, I feel like there's not <laughs> shit everywhere. But I think Medina low key likes to see the shit. So I don't think she's going <laughs> to try to get rid of. The Maybe shit. it makes you feel like, look, you got so fucking deep. You well, made me I'm shit. Not gonna lie. The <laughs> nastier that sex is, the more like intrigued I get by the experience that we're about to have. So <laughs> have, you nasty are you into golden showers? I am like, I can't do the golden shower. I've tried, but my body won't let me pee on someone. But I like, to get peed on not an all the time thing but if you want to do it i'll be like come on Nikki, don't get it in my hair <laughs> don't get it in my hair <laughs> I, so if you like that i get it because it's messiness mm-hmm. nah but she I be like it. shit bro you been- she be like oh, shit bro don't be telling your listeners that i do not like shit <laughs> hold on where have you been peed specifically as far as on your body and the place were you at their house hotel i was at his house and he peed on like I told him don't go above the collarbone but of course a little bit Same splatters right here. of course a little bit splatters on your lip but I was like okay cool but he stood over me on the bed and he peed and he like just pissed and it got all over the bed and stuff and then it was really sexy like it was really wait, on the bed did y'all start fucking it was after on the bed huh <laughs> wait did y'all start we fucking did. after we while were you were still wet his. I smelled like pee for a couple of days but that is so gross <laughs> it was in your hair I have never Why let nobody. Pee I don't on know me. if it's her voice, but I'm like, this is not that right. Bad. No, it's because she's it's trying to put that smiley voice. She's making it sound so innocent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So then he peed on me, and I smelled like a bum for three weeks. But it's okay because it was fun. You guys oh. just try it. I peed on somebody. That was fun. No. But I don't want to be peed on. I peed on somebody too, but my my pussy wouldn't like mentally. It took a while. Like, I had to go rush. The mental of her vagina. (laughs) Her vagina's brain. Seriously, I had to go run and sit over the toilet 
feel like, okay, I'm sitting over a toilet. Then when it was ready to come out, I had to hold it and run back to the shower to piss on him. That shit was hard. Sounds like it. Let I didn't have to do all that. You. So <laughs> I, I had a peeing conversation recently because... I think we were around. Ooh, no, no, y'all we getting to real next. Like, mm-hmm. Nah, y'all said no, no, no. Weezy said we can't do threesomes. Golden showers, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's a good point. Nah, somebody was like, "What episode should I start with?" So I said, "Do one of the top tens. And then when we hung up, I said, "Yo." I just realized the top 10 is the one where me and Mandy made this bet about who gets shit on, who get pissed on. Da, da, da. I think I might have said this a little bit in the last episode, but he was like, so what do you mean? Like, you need to get paid this much to get peed on. I was like, well, not if it was you, but like still. And the nigga was like, you would let me pee on you. And I'm like, no, I wouldn't. And he was like, what about below the neck? I'm like, maybe. Look, But now suddenly I've been like, at what point will we start? doing shit like this so then i brought it up like a day later right i'm like have you ever peed on a bitch she's like in the shower but like it was like a jokey thing i was like right but like a sex thing wait how do you jokingly pee on somebody bro in the shower and it's just (laughs) like like, oh i'm gonna pee on you and they let a little bit out and you're in the shower though so you're not mad what kind of niggas are y'all fucking (laughs) medina what kind of niggas i don't even understand i like having nasty sex like we understand now we didn't understand we understand but a nigga wait wait no I, we, but, no we understood no. five but seconds. a nigga is not jokingly yes. peeing on, on your bro in the like, shower yes, they are or in the toilet you never sat on the toilet and Why then he comes and starts so peeing on the toilet too so so that so that i had done but we were drunk See? <laughs> so yeah but I, just it's shared funny. This, I just shared this with um on the episode with Corey b he wanted me to piss on him and we never discussed him pissing on me because it wasn't what he wanted. He just wanted me to pee on him. But we, when we got in from the club, bitch, I was taking a piss in the toilet on a night that we decided I wasn't going to piss on him. And bro, he came and started pissing See? and it went down See? my titties into the toilet. Oh. And I didn't like it. I didn't See, like I it. Been, I, I wasn't here for it. it. <laughs> no. That's why you were smelling pissy for days. <laughs> like a kindergartner. <laughs> She had it all in the pour. She seeped it in. Wait, Kiki, 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 Kiki said I you smelled like a kindergarten. I used you to pee, pee in the bed. Yourself? I used to pee in the bed for a very long time. So maybe I'm just accustomed to the smell. Maybe it's nostalgic to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I am Maybe I'm weak. accustomed. I'm weak. Anyways, before, again, before we get into the horrible decision. Oh, wait, you both dropped your um, sex tips. So we are going to get into the horrible decision. And guys, the horrible decision for this week kind of brings... I guess our platforms to tenfold. I mean, um, cocktails has been out, I would say three and a half, four years, if I'm not Mm -hmm. mistaken. Right. Kiki. And we just, we just extended our three year anniversary. And what do you mean? We extended it. Oh, I guess we reached it. Bitch. I just be like, it feel like I'm using big words. So, okay. Extended wasn't right. We just extended our anniversary. (laughs) Cause we was going to be done with each other, but we was like, in real life, we kept going. Uh, But um, we reached our three-year anniversary in March, so last month, and I wanted to kind of have the conversation about black women, especially today, taking hold of your sexual empowerment, women empowerment, and kind of how the podcast has affected how we view sex and how it's kind of interrupted or helped our dating. Um, And so I guess I want to start with you guys. Um, The first question to you guys, again, your podcast is very similar to Horrible Decisions. Do, has your podcast affected you negatively at all in terms of the partners or dating that you guys have had over the past couple of years? I would say, yeah. Um, Absolutely. Whenever I meet someone new and they know about the show or they find out about the show because everybody wants to follow everybody on Instagram and all of that. But Whenever I meet them and they know about it, I feel like they're either trying to prove something or I don't know. Like they're trying to prove something. They just start acting weird. I don't like it. I um, it has Medina? absolutely had some negative effects. I it's gotten to the point now where if I meet somebody new, I don't even I would like to not share my Instagram. If people are really heavy on like wanting to know my Instagram, I honestly I, I don't want to move further uh-huh. <laughs> because I just don't. It's not that big. Let's get to know each other. Um, I sometimes don't know if people want to fuck with me because of the show and you want to be talked about 
or if you really want to fuck with me. I also feel like there are some men that I've right. met and they just feel like I am like right off the bat a whore. Oh yeah, that too. <laughs> and I am sometimes like, well, you don't understand. Like some of the stories that I tell, I reach back. Some of the stuff is not always current. And I might not express that in the episode. I might just tell it like it is current, but it might be from fucking high school or college or something. Like I have never been like, I feel like I'm having a dry spell. Mm-hmm honestly because of cocktails <laughs> and I you would think that's why I think that's why and, but but in that same sentence I will say that I do let men know when they bring up an issue about it you can't think that you're going to come into my life and something that we're finally starting to get some friction on and we're finally starting to like make our name in this podcast where you can't possibly think you gonna come in and think I'm a change like who I am or what I talk about. It's not, I'm not just cocktails. There's a whole other part. There's Medina Ali and there's Medina Monroe. And so you, it's just, I look at it like that's just not fair. <laughs> and Weezy and I have talked about that over the years, like meeting new people, being on dates. Of course, Weezy and I started in the corporate space. So I know I had a hard time identifying, am I a podcaster or am I an accountant? Mm. And what I wanted to even portray on my social media Am I portraying that I'm a graduate with two bachelor's degrees who's now a public accountant? Or am I portraying this media personality? And especially, I mean, shit, you talked about people thinking y'all are whores. It's in our name. <laughs> so now, as soon as I meet someone, oh, what do you do? Well, just type in whore. We pop up. And it's just like, shit, like, whore is even in the title of this show. And although we've wanted to reclaim what we identify as what a whore even is in terms of dating or meeting people new, of course, wanting to go further with it. It's kind of difficult having that conversation about what, what we and I talk about. I just had a conversation with Kiki. um, Well, it was only an hour ago, so it's fresh, (laughs) but um, on their Patreon episode where she said to me, like, what do you think your Instagram makes you look like? And uh, Kiki told me that she thinks it makes me look fun or whatever. And she asked me if there was any misconceptions of it. And um, I told her that I think for a while I, I, I was conflicted. I think this is maybe a year ago on like, should I make more depth to Wheezy? Should I put more depth in there? But I think that at the end of the day, I use Instagram now mainly not to connect with friends like I did when I first used Instagram. It, Instagram for me was something that was, oh, I want to post pictures of my travels and see what my friends are doing and blah, 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 blah. Now, I know that Instagram is a platform for my business, whether that be Wheezy the brand or Horrible Decisions, period. So with that said, do I give a fuck if people think Wheezy is uh, doing shit all day like writing or in school or whatever or in tech or doing engineering shit? I don't really care because no one cares about that content from Wheezy, and that's perfectly okay. I think that the only issue that comes into play is when people look at your Instagram that are wanting to date you and only view that. Um, But that's kind of why I've liked dating people that are almost in the industry a little bit because they realize like, Oh shit, there could be a little bit more to this bitch because this is just your brand. Um, But I mean, no, it even happened to me with old Bay. He says to me all the time, like I had no idea this was who you are. Like when I looked at your Instagram, I thought we were just going to fuck and it would be fun. And that's common for most men. I'm yeah. sure that fuck with us at first before they give a fuck. About I us. guess I guess that leads into my next question. I guess for everybody, has there been anything that you shared on the podcast that you regret? Specifically, suspic- suspic- sus- specifically, damn bitch. <laughs> specifically, <laughs> specifically, as it pertains to maybe your sexual exploration journey or. You know, version? what you've I mean, done sexually. The question. Well, we're sharing AirPods. Um, but uh, the question was, has there been anything that we've shared on the podcast specifically about sex uh, that we wish we wouldn't have or that we regret? Oh, fuck yes. Like, <laughs> and, it's, and it's crazy because like, and Kiki knows this, it, uh, that's my personality. I always, th- there have been more times than not that I've been like, fuck, I'll re-listen to the episode and be like, why the fuck did I say that? 
why did I do that? Like, that's just, I always overshare. I meet new friends and I be talking a whole lot. I'll just say some shit and be like, why did I tell her that? And it's just because I really do like talking and I really do want people to know whether it's on the show or people in my real life. I like when people know how I really am. I, I, when I talk to my mom about things that I've done, whether it be drugs or sex, I like knowing that my mom knows who I am. I never want her to be like, my child would never do that because your child would do that. And so I sometimes overshare. I remember when Kiki and I, when I first came on cocktails and I had, sh I always shared this cause I really could not let it go for like a week. And I, we did that photo shoot. Remember we were in the car, I'm in my car on Peter street. And I had talked about a producer that I had fucked and I said his name and I was talking all this shit. I was real about it. <laughs> and I was like, we got to delete it. We got to we got, cause we didn't bleep his name or anything. I was real about it. Like I was like, I don't give a fuck. Wait, all y'all had to do was bleep the name. But afterwards. I was about it. I, she had asked me, before, I was editing the episode. I was like, Hey, by the way, remember you said, maybe don't, but you said somebody's name. Do you want me to take it out? Like, or is it good? She was like, no, leave it in there. Leave it in there. So I was like, well, okay, it's just less work. Like, as time went by, even now, I ran into this nigga. I went to go pick up some to-go food at a bar during quarantine. I saw him. I was with another dude. And he probably never even heard the episode. But the fact that I just, like, broadcasted it and I was like, fuck. Like, I be fucking niggas, but no, nobody ever know who I'm fucking. And I just, like, it wasn't even that I was embarrassed. It was just that, like... I just gave you that clout. Like sometimes I'm like, he's a whack ass nigga. And I hate when like, there's a whack ass nigga that can be like, yeah, I fucked her. I was so fucking embarrassed that I did it. I was in to this day. I'd be like, why did I do that? I don't know why. You I ain't that. even gonna hold you with the quarantine <laughs> with the quarantine. I got niggas coming up from the past. A lot. Like trying to reminisce. And I'm like, Okay, calm down. We fucked a decade ago. Can you not make it present day That's as me, a I'm thing niggas. that I fuck you? <laughs> I'm texting everybody. And we gave me some good sexting tips. So I'm going to put those into play later after I have three more glasses of wine. What you mean, you niggas? What you mean, you niggas? You about to start hitting up all your old dingling? Bitch, I already started. That's what I've been doing all this time. Start? No. What do you mean we're going there? We already went. But why But why are you hitting up I'm horny. Old I'm horny. Why? But you, it's but old, you want old dick? Do you not dick feel like I would fuck again. that nigga in the past for a reason? Y'all's pussies not crazy okay. and nappy. Well, my I, booty I, hole I, is nappy. Girl, no, because I can shave myself. <laughs> oh, you know really I have wax? a wax pass, and I can't use it right now. <laughs> okay, but I have a wax. So what you do too, is when you stand in the shower, what you do is you stand in the shower, right, and you put your leg up on the edge of the of the tub, and then you just. I mean, I don't know what your how how thick your booty is in the back, but sometimes you gotta spread the one butt cheek, and you gotta take a little razor and go in there and shave the little booty I'm hair. Not <laughs> I will say, shaving is nothing compared to if you're really used to waxing. But bitch, you can get your pussy back. <laughs> yeah, like because that shit pulls from lot the of root, hair bitch. My, right I have now. new pussies. Takes off niggas. <laughs> I said I have a lot of hair right now. Actually, I think a hair got caught in this nigga's Wait, mouth. Wait, you just had a threesome with a hairy Her pussy. Andrea had hairy pussies. Well, so I ain't even gonna hold you. Before me and Drea <laughs> fucked, she went and narrowed that hole. Really she was hairy. like, "One moment." She said, "One, one minute, one minute, bitch." I had to wait fifteen minutes for for Drea. I hate the nerves. I, I, I hate it too. But I was like, you know what? We gonna work through this. It's fine because her pussy was still good. So, but I had to wait fifteen minutes for her to get the hair up off her pussy. She was like, "Wait, y'all getting whatever pussy I brought?" <laughs> First of all, Mandy always says, "Hold on." That you fuck your friends when you're drunk. Oh, we was drunk. They was doing a hookah. So, and she she did a wax Bro, while drunk. Literally, she did literally, while literally drunk. Wait, not even drunk. They was they was drunk off the hookah. We had ordered pizza and wings drunk that off night. The hookah. No. <laughs> drunk so off the So we did do wine, but they was on the hookah. Lex and Drea were on a hookah. Lex was not here for me fucking Drea that night either. We ain't even gonna talk about that. Lex was mad. She but told us. Why was she mad? Uh, Lex was pissed. Lex, Lex left the next morning and slammed the door. Like, I'm fed up with both of you bitches. <laughs> then, then she made it seem like I like, like, what is it? Pounced on fucking Drea. Like, she made mm -hmm. it seem like I I planned to do it. Mm -hmm. I was like, bitch, it, no, bitch. We just got drunk and, and they did the hookah. And then I was like, <laughs> she keeps acting the like the hookah is a drug. It's, it's drug acid. Because I don't, I don't do hookahs, but like, they was lit. We was all lit. And next thing you know, me and Drea was. It was, it was fun. Mm -hmm. That is fun. Girl okay. sex is so much fun and pretty. Mm -hmm. It is pretty. pretty. And the sounds are just so much hotter. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all just go ahead and fuck. The, as soon as it's lifted. <laughs> right, yeah. As soon as it's lifted. As soon as, 
Lift your leg with the bed. As soon as, soon as the world opens back up. As soon as I get a wax. So. <laughs> Box eater. All right. <laughs> Let's get into our whole motherfucking meal. Is this that sex somnia? Yeah, well, I actually picked a different one because why not? You want fucking with her? I mean, I was, but I feel like we can do that another time. I mean, do you want to read the sex omnia email? I, for, I forwarded it, but I found no, another she, one. No, she wilding. That shit long as hell. It is long. That's why I was like, oh, bitch, let me find a little shorter one. Um, So <laughs> this one is. We're going to do it. We're going to do it soon, sis. All right. So this one comes from one of our listeners. Hi, ladies. I'm a huge fan of the show and cannot wait for the L.A. show. Bitch, whenever they allow us to have that shit. Um, so let's get right to the point. I've been with my boyfriend since 2015 and we broke up for a year and both of us moved on with different people. Somehow we reconnected and started talking about what we have been up to and the people we were seeing. He de- he's disclosed that he hadn't had sex with anyone, but I was upfront and honest that I had and, and mentioned that I had had sex with one dude. In reality, it was three um, and I was in a platonic situation ship. The girl he was seeing was a lot younger than him, even me. He is 32 and I am 24. Old girl was about five months younger than me. They went on two trips and he has never done that with me, but really nothing I'm hurt over. Bitch, you hurt over it because you mentioned and he done took this hoe on a trip and not you. (laughs) Bitch, you hurt. Anyways, (laughs) but realizing his bare minimum effort to plan anything as fun as trips and romantic dates, I have decided to not give up the box because he does not deserve it. I did talk to him about this and have not even tried to give him a straight answer about it. I realize I am just quite used. I, I'm just quite used to his company, but also considering he's in a whole nother state. I do not want to give this pussy whenever I do go to see him during this pandemic. I refuse to sit at an airport. I can also drive. But again, I ain't trying to do more than what he does. Bitch, how you going to say you're not mad about these trips, but you just spent four sentences about how he not putting in effort. But okay. I'm starting I'm starting to think that I'd rather release urges with dudes from my past, okay, <laughs> Kiki, and just keep him by my side because emotional cords and longevity. We have amazing sex and he is someone I actually really enjoy being intimate with. So my question is, do you think it is possible to be in a quote-unquote monogamous relationship while also being celibate? <laughs> Should I even disclose to him of the major decision I have came to or just act like I'm not trying to have sex? Sex is a sacred practice to me, so I feel people who do not show with actions that they really do fuck with me do not deserve the box. I would love to hear what you ladies think. Sincerely, an emotionally attached hoe to a half-assed energy nigga. So basically, she's feeling like she's not getting the energy she wants from this person who she does enjoy intimacy with. However, she has chosen to be celibate until she's in a monogamous relationship with somebody. So she has had sex with him before. She has had sex with this is her ex. She's she's Do you think it's you this, gotta is throw mani- the this is a very manipulative This is a very manipulative it thing is. that she's doing. I feel like it is, you right? You trying to hold the pussy out. You try to throw all those other words in there to say that you holding out on pussy. And I, and I really <laughs> truly don't like shitting on women like that especially when they want to make a choice like celibacy which is a big deal right. and we should all respect and i actually think you could be in a relationship while celibate because i mean that's how people that are you know religious or go yeah, through cleanses my sister I, did it. I have a friend who was um an alcoholic and needed to refrain from sex from his wife for a little bit because he felt like that was taking place of the alcohol he's mm-hmm. like now all i want to do is fuck because i don't drink mm-hmm. he's like so i want to cut out both and she was great with it right but now you're saying until I'm in a monogamous relationship. So I don't want to fuck till I have a boyfriend is really what you're saying. But you're saying it to a nigga that you've already fucked. So now you're trying to use your pussy to but, keep him. And that will never right, work. Right. But not only that, mm. the fact that you're saying all it, it in the body of the email, you talked about how you feel like the reason you don't want to fuck him is because he's not showing effort to you and the fact that you know he so gave- now you just want to not fuck because he's not showing effort that's just yeah it's, chi- it's childish I, agree. I mean i get it if you don't want to fuck because somebody's not showing you effort but then it ain't been showing you effort so you should have started off that way so i'm saying don't do it because it's not gonna work like your plan is not gonna work that nigga was never putting the Fair effort point. forward so like it, to, for you to like withhold it now and think he's gonna put forth the effort he's not bruh so like you just need to throw the whole man because away and sex shouldn't be the, the, the yeah. Right. Sex should not be the thing that's like, 
oh, well, I'm going to take this away because he, so he can be good to me. Well, what happens when mm-hmm. he gets it? We need to make sure that people are good to us at all points. Exactly. Mm-hmm. True. And I'm I like, agree. Say, I wanted to actually ask this to you, Kiki. What? Yeah, because you're reaching out to people from the past. I'm curious to know, are you expecting effort? From any of these guys, I'm expecting that dick you plan pics to, and to videos, and I want to see them fucking bitches and stuff I like that, like nasty honest. stuff. <laughs> like that's all I want. When this shit is over and I'm back outside, I don't care about them. I'm not reaching out <laughs> to them to like reestablish a real connection or maybe build one because we didn't have one from the beginning. No, and this girl just needs to give it up to God because this is this just makes no sense. It's it, not the plan is no, not gonna work. I, I I agree. Mm-mm. I agree, and it's crazy because. Um, I think the effort is literally something that a lot of men don't realize. Like it could be the bare minimum as far as like responding to a text message in a, in a, you know, good enough time or you trying to make plans with me. It's that little bit of effort that we do like to see for men. And it's funny cause I was talking to my home girl and they, she made, she made plans to get some quarantine mm-hmm. dick and she hit him up at 11 o'clock girl. He hit her up at five in the morning talking about he fell asleep. And so it was literally me talking like, bitch, you pretty much let him know that y'all had plans to fuck. And he hits you the next day talking about, oh, he fell asleep. So even just that little bit of effort, we both were just like, oh, he got to be written off. He can't get no pussy now during quarantine. Like, wait, why? Yeah, he he said she, yeah he because it, I feel like he's lying, right? Like you guys made plans to see each other that night. So she, oh, they made plans. They made I'm sorry, plans I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I thought other. she hit him up at 11 no, and no, no, she no, was no. mad. They made plans. Oh, nah. They made plans. And so she hit him up at 11 like, I'm just waiting on you. Bro, he hit her Let the me next tell morning. you something. Like, I, I fell asleep. My, my nigga and I were joking around the other day because, right? So, so we do like two days off and I be making Does jokes. So he? he got another bitch in him two days. He's like, when I'm a fucker. And nah. But, he's, but he said, when would I fuck her? He's like, we FaceTime every night. I'd be in the bed at midnight. I said, I don't give a fuck, nigga. We FaceTime when you go to sleep and bitches ain't shit. And cool, dick is low out here. There could be a bitch that could come through at 1201 and leave at 202. Trust me. I don't believe oh. none of that. Like, well, I was just, I was just going to say bitches ain't shit is me. Cause I done been laid right up in the bed with a nigga while he FaceTime his Andy. bitch. So oh, I already know. That's why I'm like, don't do know, that Kiki. But, don't do that Kiki. <laughs> She said, man, but nigga logic, he just like, how I'm a fucking bitch. I said, don't act like it ain't motherfucking possible. I hate bitch, I'm sorry. I don't, like yeah, don't it's possible. act like it's how, not possible. We all know. How, how, how I'm a fucking bitch. Then the other day, right? Now, I will say, so we, we riding bikes, right? He did like a 20 mile bike ride. It is 1130. He's like, baby, I'm getting tired. I said, oh, really? You're that tired? You're that tired. You want to go to bed at 1130? PM. He's like, what? A, who am I? Who am I have come through? Who is coming here? The bitch that's coming at 12. <laughs> because you told her you had work to do until 1130. Because you knew I was your work. Because we talked before your motherfucking ass go to sleep. I said, I don't give a fuck. I'm telling you. I'm crazy. I was just about to I believe you're that. I'm crazy. crazy. And also, I also need to pick these fights so we could have sex. Weezy picks fights so she could have that sex. Sounds, that sounds all types of toxic. I couldn't even toxic, hear what you were saying because my AirPod died and I had to throw it in the charger really quick. But I'm just like, what the fuck is this crazy bitch talking about? Well, now I know. Well, <laughs> some crazy <laughs> some crazy bullshit. I mean, like, he know I ain't serious, but I feel like if we get in them arguments, you know what I'm saying? Because he'd be like, who you fucking fucking? I'd be like, no, I, mean, I love a crazy bitch. I need that Toxic. Shit. You need toxicity. <laughs> Um, I guess before we get out of here, um, Medina, if you can let us know um, where our listeners can listen to cocktails, what you guys have going on, and also your social media handles. Let them know. Y'all, you can listen to cocktails. Dang, the AirPod died. But you can listen (laughs) to cocktails everywhere where there is a podcast. Mm -hmm. Um, Follow us on our cocktails page at Cocktails Podcast on Instagram. Follow Kiki at... Kiki said so. And follow me at Coffee Bean Dean. And we will update you guys on what we have. We have a lot of bonus content coming out on Patreon. And y'all gonna love it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, our episode. Yeah, they have two oh, episodes too. featuring Weezy and I. But also, if you guys are into reality TV, uh, Medina was a cast member that on Temptation Island. Plug. So they are currently y'all can, playing Temptation Island. You know, I'm just saying. <laughs> I like that plug. Can, they like, are. 
Listen, I, I feel like that's where my future husband is overseas. Temptation somewhere. Island I was a bomb that I was show, on it. though. So, like, when I found out Medina was on it, because I, I watched the first one when I had, like, a regular office job, and we'd be in that motherfucking office. I think it came on Tuesdays. <laughs> Wednesday, like, Nicola! This bitch wild, the white bitch! Like, so when Medina was on the show, I couldn't wait to come in that office and be like, <laughs> my friend, the pretty black one, is... On Temptation. <laughs> I'm not even going to hold you, though. Like, between Temptation Island and now I think they have Too Hot to Handle on Netflix, I need to know the casting. I need to know the casting people for black men mm. on reality TV because those aren't what's it. Them ain't the, the fine, fine niggas, niggas don't want to mess their shit what? up and be on TV because they're doing too much. Let me tell you something. I'm going to take this exact uh, clip. and these I'm gonna, are opportunists. I'm, I am very close with a lot of the casting directors and the producers of Temptation. I'm going to send it to them because I it's was awful. like, yeah. I thought I was gonna meet my husband. I'm meeting little niggas. You you get you get you a Carlton. These are the black men that you choose. Like, and even for the one on Netflix, they're supposed to be the hottest men. They they went to all the mm-hmm. countries, and I'm like, here's what I will say though: having done a reality show, they put you through Let me so go. much Look. testing that a lot of niggas get cut out of it. Mm. I mean, like if you have yeah, because I want to see I but I want to see the real hood yeah, nigga. You're not getting First no hood off, nigga. We Bruh. need to go back. We need to go back. To make your own. They put you through not back. only STD testing. See? They need to send you to Mexico, Mandy. What good nigga? They put you nah, through the most intense STD medical testing. They put you through an IQ test. They have you sit down with a therapist and a, uh, uh, a psychiatrist. You have to go through so many different levels and pass it that it, you, you start to see the fine niggas. When you're going through the process, you see the fine niggas, and then you get to the house, and you're like, where's that nigga? And you're like, dang, he either didn't pass the STD test <laughs> or he's crazy. That's what happened. Or maybe both. I ain't even gonna hold you. Can, can we get back to the days where they were casting for like Flavor of Love? Because they had they hood bitches on these. that shit. Or, or like, well, because they weren't as intrusive. The internet didn't exist. Damn. Nobody could cancel them yet. Tequila Tequila oh, had the <laughs> niggas, bitch. She, she's a Republican. <laughs> we're not gonna bring her up. Oh, but we will bring up, speaking of IQs and plugging shit, I have something to plug. I'm actually super excited about this. Quarantining has made me call a lot of friends and learn a lot of shit. So one of the friends that I want to learn shit with, who is Eddie Delisepi, he came on our podcast. We decided to start a new podcast. It comes out tomorrow on the 28th. It's called For Fact's Sake. And we get on there. Each topic every week is random. And we just talk about random topics of it. We got (laughs) eggs, Donald Trump, Scientology. The one you guys will hear tomorrow is uh, Tiger Kings. It's so much fun. And um, I love it. We have a segment called Who, What, and uh, Where. And it's like a ranting segment. And my nigga, it's fun as fuck. And I'd be like, be about to say nigga with Eddie, but he still feels the energy. <laughs> is he like, white? Whoa, yeah, man, that sounds pretty serious. And I'd be like, and that pussy bitch. He's something. Yeah, I think he's Italian. Peruvian. Or something. Oh, yeah, he's something. Eddie's white and he got Peruvian. He ain't black. So he be, he be telling his little, he tell he get his Spanish jokes off, though. I was telling a story about Maria. He's like, and she's not cleaning? I was like, oh, shit. But uh, no, the podcast is fun. You learn random shit. Um, please like listen to it. I think you guys will like it. Um, we got a little trailer we made, and uh, yeah, it's fun. It's a good project mm-hmm. for quarantine. I feel like. Yeah. yeah. We all need. One. How are you guys doing as far as being creatives during quarantine? I feel like this is my time. I've been coming up with all kind of shit, and I'm so excited because my new mics came on. Okay, girl, I got my live you got mics the that green came in today. Ready, bitch. Yes, I've got more stuff to film. We'll, we'll probably film something tonight. I don't know, um, but I've been really enjoying it. I forget. I technically work from home, but um, the I much to do. Is, <laughs> I think it's so dope that like y'all. We were all just talking about how it's like reality TV doesn't cast the right black men. I will say that like Kiki has been coming up with ideas for like reality television and that naturally in my mind I was like if this bitch really does produce a reality television show we will see the niggas that we want to see and fuck. Mm-hmm. Whether they pass the background check or not. <laughs> We're not we going to worry about the background check. Yeah. She's not going to worry about the background. She's going to bring us the niggas on the reality TV and it's not going to be like an on own. It's going to be on like E or Bravo. Cause bitch, I'm waiting from from a couple of the different shows that I did watch too. Like shit, even there was a one cute nigga on the circle, but he was so lame. Once he started talking, we all it thought was like, he wasn't lit no more. It was just like ew, the the basketball looking player nigga. Mm-hmm. Anyways, and, and maybe that that's just me because that's my type. But yeah, I love I the basketball like player looking looking <laughs> nigga. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, but anyways, Yo, and when they don't play ball, you be like, damn, you fucked your leg up, huh? <laughs> 
<laughs> I got injured. No, um, no, but this quarantine during this time has been definitely interesting. Um, I love that all of the creatives are getting in their bag and finding ways because I do think that life as we knew it will not exist in the same capacity, at least for the next couple couple years, specifically with like live venue performances, festivals, even sporting events. Bitch, I can't sit courtside. I thought I was about to get up and be lit like that, but no. So, I mean, it's just definitely interesting to where we are now, but I love that everyone's getting behind a mic, getting in front of their cameras, and creating content. Also, guys, there's a lot of um, huge networks that are looking for content creators. So if you go to, like, a Comedy Central or a BET or a Complex, a lot of them are now looking for um creatives to bring them content and this could this could uh, potentially end up being a check for you since i know a lot of us have checks that have been taken away from us so definitely start doing your googles and reach out to that to that shit i guess thank you kiki and medina for finally joining us thanks for having um us. we got maduna in the building <laughs> and kiki who's thing. reaching out to old niggas <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having Madudu, us I, I am like i feel like Everybody is in a good place right now. And I love that, like, we yes. did this. And I literally feel like I'm sitting with y'all. I feel like we're having a girls' night out in. Mm -hmm. And this was so much fun. I fuck with y'all. I can't wait to see y'all in real life when we all just know, kick right? it. Maybe we have sex. What do we think? A foursome? No. I mean, you and, you and Weezy gonna have sex. I done already asked Kiki if I could bring Bodie down <laughs> to Atlanta she can with come, me. But that cat like, can't come. Bring Bodie and he can stay in my place. She's Bodie can stay with me. No, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we gonna put Bodie at your house because I'm like, bitch, I got a whole... Bitch, I thought y'all you were talking shit about Bodie. cats. I was talking yeah, shit about I, cats. I told her that cat can't come. Yeah, I love oh, all yeah, animals. But no, no, no. Kiki, oh, yeah. don't don't front. You said Bodie can't come if he, if he be no, climbing and No, I said he can't come, shit. especially like, because... He be climbing and scratching shit. I know what a cat oh. is. That's not the type of cat I like, okay? It's a different kind that Bodie don't bite. Is welcome. I'm dead. Anyways, thank you. Okay, so it looks like, bitch, I might end up <laughs> fucking Medina before you. Then we all really go. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank y'all for tuning in to yet another episode of Horrible Decisions. We are going to leave you with a five-minute bonus clip from one of our past bonus episodes again if you guys are looking to support the brand and also get more content during quarantine we have over 60 episodes on our patreon platform and for our top tier listeners Weezy and I are doing this thing where we bring on I think the next one we we plan to do 250 people instead of 100 but we're working on doing kind of live interactive um wd episodes with you guys so if that's something that y'all are interested in you guys have the opportunity to ask us live questions and be involved in and the production it's not like the virtual orgy you can yeah, actually no. see yeah. everything <laughs> yeah no it's not the virtual orgy we're not it's on dope. there fucking people but you guys can ask us questions it's super dope and you can only do that by be by becoming a patron at patreon.com backslash horrible decisions you do have to put the backslash horrible decisions because it is, a, it is an 18 and up contented platform where we post porn it's not our porn but we share porn clips and it's definitely 18 and up so make sure you type in patreon.com backslash horrible decisions to become a patron again we're going to leave you guys with a five minute clip if you're interested and once again this has been another episode of horrible decisions everybody say bye peace y'all bye mwah, mwah. Brah, brah. Mm, i saw that tongue hanging <laughs> today's vanilla shit comes from our show in Chicago and the reason I want to bring it back up is because we never really got to dig into what we would order. So in London there's a restaurant that's opening uh, a <coughs> supper club where it's a three course meal that you get I think upon entry it's like 80 euro and then you have access to other stuff in the venue like a hot tub, different rooms. It's pretty much a sex club but the only thing that's a little bit different is you can actually order sex on the menu. Um, so what I wanted mm. to know... I think you made a joke about not paying for sex, and then we got into some shit. Ever. Shit. But if you had the budget and if you had to order. First off, I got the budget. No, no, no. Like, if you had the budget, like, let's say you had to spend three grand at this place. Like, they gave you the money. Like, let's say you had to, let's say you're on some influencer shit. And they're like, Mandy B, we would like you to come to this restaurant. I need Ruby LaCheek's dick on the menu. Who's Ruby LaCheek? The, the, the guy fucking, from Black? No, the soccer player in London. If I'm in London... And I'm Ruby about to pay. La Cheeks. I hope it's LaCheck. I don't know. It's spelled E-E-K. LaCheek. I don't know. 
I, bitch, I'm American. I don't know how to lit shit. I don't know how to fuck to pronounce Ruby. it. Ruby. I will, dog. How do you spell it? Type in R U B. That nigga gonna pop up with his fine ass. I'm on YouTube because I, de- I no gonna... go to his Instagram. R U B I. No, R U B E Y. It's Ruben Loftus Cheek is his name. Ooh. Yeah, bitch. That's who I want for three. Oh, it ain't lit cheek. Ooh, they want to know if he'd be in fluffy handcuffs. Would that's, you do it? I want him any way I can. I'll take him raw. Bitch. Okay, that's free. not the question. I'm not paying. I don't. I can't honestly wrap my mind around paying for dick. I don't know why you be trying to get me to admit how yeah. I would want to pay for dick. If this is an icebreaker, we're we are not horrible decisions right now. Mandy, hey, hey, sex club. what's up? What would you order on a menu? Would it be oral sex? Would it be penetration? Clearly, it wouldn't would be oral sex. Would you rather pay to watch people? No, let, let me pay to would fuck the shit out of a pay? nigga. Nope. I want. Pay? I want three asses lined up, bent the fuck over. I want. Fine ass niggas, just booty holes spread wide open, and I get to just go and ram them with my pegger. That's what I want. Okay, so you want to order something? If you make, you're making me order something. It's not that I want to order it, no, but no. if you see here telling me no, I got your pay, truth, bro. If you see here telling me I gotta, I gotta pay to do some, bitch. I want three booty holes bent over. I want them to spread their own cheeks, and I want, want them, them to take. To like, Actually, I'm lying. No, 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 I'm lying. One of them I want bent over. The other one I want on his back, holding his legs back. And the last one, I'm finna lay down and make him ride me. Boom. Three positions right there. And I dominate all their asses. Literally. That's what the fuck you gonna... That's what I want to pay for, ho. Okay, Go well, ahead. What do you want to pay for? I want to make love with a big cock. Go ahead. That, Talk about, that, I know, <laughs> bitch. Damn. With your emotional ass. Actually, nah, you I'm know not, what I would pay for? I'd pay for like a tag team. Like a good gangbang. That's but and see, even in the gangbang that I would want to do, I want to gangbang a nigga with another bitch. So like, had that nigga suck my strap while the other bitch like ram his ass. Yeah, I want to be dominated pretty bad. Oh, you want to be dom? Yeah, I want to dominate somebody in the gangbang because you know clearly cocky is like my favorite kind of porn. Yeah, but it's disgusting. Yeah, I couldn't even imagine that. Like strangers come on my face. No. Not like strangers. They're but gonna like, be strangers, bro. I You're know, paying for it. Sex like, workers they're... are strangers. Let's pretend they're all. I like... know. You want the BFE boyfriend experience. I do, bitch. <laughs> I want them to all lay with me after and tell me how pretty I am, too. Oh, my God. Yeah, no. Not 100% not interested in paying full cock in any way. I mean, I just. Well, that that's the thing, though. Because I want such degrading sex, I need a little bit of that after. Like. Okay. I can I can dig it. I can dig just it. Just a little. Um. So. The kink of the week. I'm not sure if we've ever done it before, but I saw a video about it and I was like, "Oh, we gotta do this." Uh oh. For microphilia, and it's just mm-hmm. we done that. What is it? That's the insect shit, right? Have we done that in a show? I don't. I don't remember. You know what? It might be one that I've been meaning to bring up on here, honestly. And I'm just like, how the fuck are we gonna talk about insects? Because bitch, I ain't even gonna hold you. If I go to a nigga house and I see a roach, bitch, my pussy dry. We not fucking. Bro, I don't want to see bugs. Have you at ever anywhere. been to someone's house? And yes, seen a I have. And it, you, like, start... It's my mom used to laugh at me because my uncle, like, actually my aunt, a lot of my family, bitch, had mad roaches in their house, and I used to tell my mom I was allergic. Like, mommy, I can't go to their house because I'm allergic. <laughs> I don't like roaches like Dude, not at all and then when I lived in Atlanta there's these like centipedes 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 centipedes